So, over the last years, I've been a soldier on a newly colonized planet fighting an alien threat and learning that sometimes a common enemy can bring together the most unlikely allies. I've been a student studi studying magic at a magical college, which didn't only bring me to a world that the 12-year-old me could have only dreamed about. It also showed me a world where my heritage, age or gender really doesn't matter for my possibilities in life. And this would also be me. In 1961, America, a 16-year-old trying to reconcile the world's expectations of being a good housewife with her own wishes to become a scientist or maybe a doctor. I'm Susan. I believe that LARP can change the world. Now, life stands for, LARP stands for Live Action Role Play. It's a form of improvisational theater where everybody is a part of the story. Participants take on a role in a pre-designed world, which can be a literary world, history or fiction, maybe even fantasy. Now, the way it deviates from theater is that there's no audience. You're either a part of the story as a player with a character, or you're part of the crew bringing that world to life as an extra or a crew member. Now, I know we have kind of an image problem because normal media likes to portray us as 40-year-old men living in their mother's uh, attics, playing video games all day and going in the forest in the weekend, screaming fireball at each other and hitting each other with plastic swords. But, yeah. So, we've been developing as a community into something we like to call blockbusters and 360 illusions. It's when everything around you, every part of the space you're in, the scenography, the people are part of the fiction and nothing will take you out of that. For example, this one. It's the College of Wizardry, based on some fiction we might know. And what 12-year-old didn't believe, believe that they wanted to go to a school like that, to be taught magic, to wear a school robe. Or this one, based on the literary works of Dracula, playing a crew member or a uh, visitor on the ship that took Dracula's body to England while actually sailing the Baltic Sea. These are 360 illusions. And besides those really pretty pictures, there's another movement going on in the LARP right now. There's something we like to call social LARPs. LARPs that bring complex societal problems to light and let people step into another one's shoes to explore what they really feel. After all, are we allowed to talk about somebody's experience like we're actually there if we cannot know what they are feeling and hopefully never have to feel the way they are feeling? An example of this is Halat Hisar, a Palestinian Finnish LARP project where Palestinians created a pseudo-Finland reminiscent of the actual Finland, but modeled after what they were daily experiencing in Palestine, where you'd have to have your passport checked before to go into class. Or you'd wake up in the morning and you weren't sure if your roommate was still going to be there or if the military police would have taken them from their beds. It's a chance to step into another person's shoes. But what makes LARP such a medium for that? Well, for one, there's a complex social construct going on in LARP and in our real world, which is vastly different. Once we start participating in a LARP, we all decide that that fiction of the world will be our reality for a little while. And whatever we will do in there will stay in that fiction. So we can be horrible people, but once we step out of it, we're back to our own selves, and we will not hold the actions of somebody in that fiction against them. Then there's also alibi. We take on a character. We take on something that will help us explore the feelings of somebody else. And at the same time, it allows us to step away from those experiences afterwards and say, but I wasn't that horrible person. That was my character. And that's okay. Because in that fiction, those actions were acceptable or understandable. Another example is the quota, made together with the actual refugee council in England where participants will be refugees waiting to be allowed access into the country, but there's a quota. And how far will you go? How far will you go to be allowed on that list? And is what you do really going to make a difference? 
Or has somebody already decided that for you? And it will be played in an actual prison, something that will only enhance the experience of those participating. And then there's another thing that helps us. It helps us significantly, and that's fun. LARPing is fun. Really, I swear, there's something amazing about going into a forest and beating your friends with a sword, because it's allowed for once. <laughs> but at the same time, not all worthwhile experiences have to be fun. Feeling repressed, exploring what somebody else is feeling, can be a worthwhile experience, even though it hurts or it scrapes a little bit. It's part of the experience. For example, Cirque, a LARP about a freak show in the 1920s in America, where a lot of the participants were part of a show, showing skills they'd actually practiced at home already. And they had a lot of fun with the audience who was cheering them on and actually rooting for them to do good. But at the same time, there was still the outside world present, telling those circus freaks that they weren't part of society. And they felt that pressure. They felt that social exclusion as well. And for many of them, the fact that the experience was both fun and a bit painful was what made it actually worth it. So I believe that carefully curated experiences in LARPs that leave a lot of room for reflection and afterthought, that allow us to revisit the emotions we experienced in our characters, can actually grow empathy. After all, if we walk a mile in another one's shoes, maybe it will help us a little bit to understand better what they're feeling and we're actually more informed and can make better decisions about our opinion about them. Thank you very much. Thank you.